Hello everyone, good morning and welcome back. So waking up this morning, I had my NPR news running like normal and then boom, Russia officially invading Ukraine. This is something I felt like we've all kind of expected, but it's always different once it's actually there, once it actually happens. What I personally did myself is I wrote some friends all around the world. I've spent time in Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Eastern Europe for well over half a year and just kind of getting a feel for some of the perspective on the ground. And everyone is very devastated. And it's going to be interesting to see what goes forward in the next few days and in even hours at this point. So my head was a lot on the macro stuff going on today. I just kind of wanted to be aware what was going on. In terms of stocks, I was managing my swing trades, but I didn't really do so much day trading. I just couldn't really focus on it. It wasn't on the top of my mind at any time. You know, I'm not clear in the head. I'm sick. I'm t I really tired, like sleep deprived or something like this. And I'm not really focused. Sometimes it's even with work where I'm just thinking about something with work. It's better for me not to trade because then I end up tripping over myself and I'm kind of upset because I'm like, I should have tra not traded anyway. So that's pretty much what I did today. I did a small trade on CEI. I know that ticker was flying for a bit, but I just couldn't really get comfortable on it. My mind was everywhere else. I was watching a few other things for better or worse. It is what it is. Um, I, I have no regrets. So without further ado, let's actually go over to the uh, day trading screen and see what's going on here. Here you can see some of my swings I've been managing. I'm out of most of them because we had a huge rally um, with the intention to rebuy. You could already see my, my buy limit order set up. And for some reason, I can't move this one down here, which I usually have. Maybe I can move it down together. Ah, oh, yeah, that worked, okay. So you can see, I only did a small little backside bottom bounce on CEI. Also very, very small size. Um, I actually had the right idea, but it was a little bit early, so I kind of closed this one for a scratch. But let's talk about this one really quickly. Then let's review some of these swing trades, which are just absolutely crazy. And then just look. let's look at the SPY to see how it reacted and some thoughts going forward from here. So very quickly, CEI. On the daily chart, you know, this is the classic ugly pattern, but it's an oil and gas play and all those plays right now are, are pumping like crazy. We got IMPP, INDO, CEI, a lot of small caps just pumping right now, these oil and gas stocks. So they're not really up on any micro news, any news specific to the company, but they're up on the macro news of the Russian invasion of energy supply crunches uh, going around, especially in Europe. So this ticker we've traded quite a bit uh, a few months ago. Yeah, back in September, in October, but ever since then it was on a big backside uh, pattern. Eventually it looks like it came up with a somewhat of a bottom bounce here, a double bottom and you know rallied here 120%, big resistance around a dollar, 250 million shares outstanding and 200 million market cap after this push. Now let's look at the five minutes, see how this one actually behaved. I actually really like the way this one has been stair stepping up. Look at that, pop to the upside, stair step, pop to the upside, stair, consolidation, and this really aggressive pop to the upside consolidation. And then it tried for a fourth stair. So we have one, two, three, and it's trying that for fourth stair. So this was a classic gap and go. So we have the gap, continuation, and go. This is like the pattern that we pretty much live by. So that's why I'm kind of like, oh, you know, I messed, missed this one a little bit. Um, but again, I was, my mind was everywhere. Um, so one of those classic mistakes in terms of um, oftentimes when I don't do so good trading, it's not, it's when I'm not really focused. I'm not zoomed in on one ticker. And, and that's why I was saying earlier, I have no regrets because I was just kind of paying attention to everything today. For me, that was a little bit more interesting. Sure, I left a lot of profits on the table. Um, it is what it is, but who knows? Maybe I would have had a red day because I would have tripped over myself or something. You never really know. So that's that's kind of where, where I'm coming at. I did go ahead and trade this one on the backside when I felt like its run was over. The reason I picked this area is because we had the VWAP break and then we were coming towards some really nice support in this area around 0.84. We have a few pivot zones in this area and that's where I did the first trade. And then we have more support around 0.8. So I was looking for my second trade right around here, 0.8. We never got that. And we kind of had this little bit of a premature pop here, arguably. I was waiting for that 0.8 pop. So that would have been my second trade on this one. Either way, both of them would have been more of a backside trade. I'm not crazy about trading backside on small cap. So um, this was already kind of breaking my rules a little bit. Um, but at this point, I was a little bit more attentive. Um, so I went ahead and took a, took a trade on that. But overall, oil and gas stocks are just flying right now, these small caps. I mean, look at this one. You know, shoulda, coulda, woulda just held this one. It's up almost 300%, absolutely crazy. And then INDO, all these tickers that we've been trading quite a bit. Uh, this one's not popping up. My trades aren't popping up on it. But we did trade this one quite a bit here on Tuesday in this area. And then um, also holding its highs really well. And then had that big pop today. 
really good action overall. And I hope we get a little bit more continuation like this in the small caps. We've been seeing some really good poppers lately. You know, Tigger's over 40%, which doesn't feel like a lot, but it's nice to actually see it after, you know, all of January and most of February, where it was just flat. It was a total summer morning lake out there um, with no movement and it's been pretty difficult to day trade luckily overall we're green it's just been uh, so slow so i haven't really been too ambitious um and you know taking my trading to the next level at the moment i've been sizing down just kind of keeping things really calm with some of these swing trades let me just quickly show you what's going on we have um, huge bounces here and coin was a classic one in my swing trade portfolio if you guys want to check it out I'll link it in this video um, but we just constantly have these pops to the upside um, where you know sometimes I don't get the full move like here I pretty much closed for break even um, here I took a small loss on it here made a little bit of a profit but I'm basically waiting for these tickers to start bottoming out and it helps when I get a little bit more active on these tickers and, and try to trade them QS, we did a little bit of a pop here when this one was breaking higher. This was a decent trade. Oatly, this was a nice one. We accumulated a little bit too early, but we just sold in that big pop right here. So even this one, we made some profit on. These are much bigger positions in general. So even, you know, one or 2% move for me personally makes quite a big difference because um, I'm going in with like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on these trades. And right now I just felt like me watching the swing trades was much more beneficial because um, Oatly, you know, huge, huge, huge move there, 10% uh, space. Uh, another ticker we've been trading so aggressively. I don't know if it's in this account or my IRA. Um, just all over the place we've been trading space. And I don't think my trades are popping up, uh, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but we did close out space just recently. And then we had this trade right here. This was a really nice one where I think it was the day before we were accumulating right in this area. And then we sold here on the pop. That was a really, really nice, almost 20% um, gain. Again, you can see all my trades in the swing trading portfolio. For some reason, they're not popping up here. If we go to Overwatch and then we just reload it, sometimes this works. Um, but lately, um, it has been working so well. Uh, yeah, there we could see it. This is the trade I was just talking about where we were accumulating this area. It looks like I bought a little bit premature here as well. Um, and then we had that nice pop. Um, and then the same situation, space, bought here, sold here. But this one, I didn't get my size. I was gonna start accumulating at the market open, but again, I was just all over the place. Um, but I you know, closed this one and, and so on and so forth. Um, LMND, this one had a huge sell-off and then popped up here 30%. Um, I think this one's going to be a great acquisition um, at one point, so I'm just watching it. I do have a uh, position in my IRA account, which we are down, but I closed a lot of that right here recently. And then Clove, similar situation. Clove, we had a massive win yesterday. We started accumulating this ticker a um, couple, like two days ago. Yeah, somewhere in this area. Yeah, here's a little trade. I sold all of it, and then I started accumulating again, started buying my last size here. Um, before earnings because this ticker is down like 94 percent i felt like even if it had bad earnings it was going to pop um, because we've been seeing that these tickers that are down 90 plus percent they come out with earnings that are horrible and they're still going up 30 40 50 percent <laughs> and it's just because no one else is selling at this point anymore um shorts are getting squeezed dip traders are coming in traders are coming in and, and they just rally so hard the thing is they don't hold their highs so we quickly took some profits in this area i took profits prematurely right in this area around 24 um, definitely missed some nice upside on that 10% um, but still I just don't really care um, because they sell off like space for example you know this ticker randomly popped up because it announced it's going to have ticket sales I mean everyone knows space is selling tickets uh, but still it doesn't matter it still pops up 40% here I'm like what the heck that doesn't make any sense and that's why they don't hold their high so when space did come out with earnings this was a classic play where oh now my trades aren't showing up again where uh, where was I buying somewhere in this area I was buying let me just reload it again. Yeah, in this area I was buying, the second it popped up after earnings, I just went ahead and closed the position because I'm like, you know, these tickers are not holding their highs, but they're still popping like crazy based on no news. That's why I've been getting a little bit more aggressive. Uh, focusing on my swing trade portfolio, we are down quite substantially uh, on our swing trade portfolio this year because of that big sell-off. But by managing my positions over the last few weeks, you guys know I've been really focused on that. I've been able to reduce my losses immensely and even make some profits in the last few weeks um, basically trading this volatility so i'm kind of like day trading them but i'm i'm really giving the trades a little bit more time to play out so i think for overall for my portfolio focusing on the swing trades right now is a little bit more beneficial than day trading something that i'm just not super comfortable day trading i mean these this is just very choppy in my eyes um this classic small cap so i'm not you know super excited about day trading it so there's no point for me to like put all my energy in there when 
I could be making much better returns just managing my uh, longer term positions. Let's really quickly go to the SPY and see what's going on. This is the S&P 500 futures and you can see we broke a critical spot yesterday and then pre-market we broke this double bottom here and that really cements the downtrend. I would say the original cement of the downtrend was really here when we weren't able to make a new high and you can see we broke instantly resistance came in here and we flushed back down. That was the cement in my eyes so we now have a lower high so we're continuing that downtrend. We have lower lows coming in now. Um, I don't know where this is going to stop, but this gives you a really good idea that now we are officially in a downwards trend on the overall markets, the, the indexes, the U.S. markets. There are some critical support zones, 415, for example, is one, um, and that's what we bounce back to. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of resistance came in now and there is a continued downtrend. Um, next major support is going to be closer to $400. So we're going to want to be watching this area a little bit closer. Um, you can see we had a big sell off into this area back in May last year. So let's go ahead and mark that around 400. So that's going to be a spot to look. Plus it's going to be right around this trend line that we're watching. So this 400 zone is a key spot that I'm going to be looking at maybe for little bounces. And I, I probably won't be trading the SPY or the indexes, but I'll be looking for those classic um, meme stocks, these high flyer tech stocks that are sold off. And if they're still selling off a little bit and we're approaching this area on SPY, that to me would be a really good time to buy, accumulate, because if we get any sort of little bounce on the SPY, two, 3% over a day or two, I think these can be moving 20, 30, 40%. So that's really what my game plan is going forward. And in the meantime, if we can get some day trading in, great. Otherwise, again, I'm gonna be taking a little bit slow. I'll actually be back in Germany uh, in like pff, less than 10 days from now. So I'll definitely be trading pre-market a bit more aggressively again, um, as long as we get action. Um, and it'll also be just interesting kind of reporting from over there, seeing how the vibes are uh, locally. Anyway, guys, that's all for this day trading recap. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to drop a like on the way out. I'll see you then first thing tomorrow morning for the last recap of the week. If you're new to the community, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you part of the community. And like always, everyone, especially to our friends in Ukraine, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.